everyone, it's Teresa, and today we are going to do some fun Dreaming of Summer collab. Uh, I'm going to be telling you more about these lovely ladies in just a minute. So we're starting off with one of these signs from Dollar Tree. It's about 19 inches long, so it's a little shorter than the normal ones. I know, I know, it's really pretty, and I'm covering it up. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to cover it up with some black chalkboard paper. I still haven't tested it out yet to see if it works. I don't have any chalk in my house somehow. Um, and then I have the front side, or really technically the back side, I've already painted it, and Nantucket blue. And I'm just going to add a line all the way across on the kind of like the top portion of it, and then also another line below that. And this is going to serve as my spot to place all of my letters. So no cricket on this project today everyone <laughs> these are just the poster letters that you can get from dollar tree and i just uh i thought that they would work out really well for this project so i'm gonna just stick them all on and i'm gonna put them on a little bit above the line i know that doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense but you'll see why in just a minute um i'm gonna put them all just above the line just to make sure that you don't end up seeing that line at all so just make sure when you're doing that you stick them down really good they like to kind of sit up a little bit and now we are going to paint over the letters it's kind of like a reverse stencil if you will and this is rust-oleum chalk paint in the color chiffon cream and uh, we're going to be using this color along with that Nantucket blue that the sign is uh, and as also the Waverly chalk paint in mineral those are like our colors for the whole video so hopefully you like them because that's what you're going to see a lot of all right so I'm taking that mineral paint next and I'm just doing a really rough painting over it. I don't want to cover the blue entirely. I want a lot of it to be showing through since this is going to be really rustic and coastal as well. So I was kind of going at least to keep a little bit on the rustic side. You guys know that that tends to be my vibe that I like. So once I am finished with all of that, we're going to go back through and actually pull up the stickers. So this is, like I said, kind of gives you like a reverse stencil. So we'll pull all of those up uh, with our little Cricut tool. So see, they're good to have these kinds of things, even when, you know, you don't have a Cricut. <laughs> so like I said, though, when you're, if you're going to do something like this, make sure you are really cautious about getting those stickers all the way down and this is why I did not want to cover up the line because if I had covered it up it would have kept the paint from getting onto it and you'd be able to see it and nobody wants to see your guideline <laughs> or at least I know I didn't want to see my guideline in this so we're just about done and it's going to reveal our beautiful saying that I just wanted this lovely calm and you know environment for my patio where this is going to go. So sit back and stay a while. Um, hopefully not too long. Sometimes there are some people I'm like, oh, hopefully it'll stay forever. <laughs> All right. And next we're just going to hot glue down some of this rope. It's just the nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'm putting it up on the top because I didn't want to put it on the back side since I already put my paper down. And I thought, you know what, this would just give it a nice, you know, a nice little touch just to leave it on the front side. So I'm going to kind of blend it in with that other part of the rope. We're just going to, you know, get your glue on the ends of the rope. That way they don't really fray too much. So I don't mind them fraying a little bit because it's obviously it's rustic, it's coastal, you know. It's to be expected, but you don't want to do it too much. So we'll just glue it down all the way. Try to um, not try to don't. Eh, I can't talk today. Sorry. Try not to put down all of your glue on those long sides at once because you're going to end up having kind of like a, it start to dry a little, you know. So we're going to glue. Now, one thing, be careful how you do your corners, because if you're not cautious on them, you'll end up where they're not hitting where that other rope is. And I also wanted to make sure that I covered up on the other side the holes because I didn't decide to fill them. I just was like, oh, I'm going to cover them with the rope. So no need to worry about it. So, you know, just kind of decide if you want like that more rounded edge to your rope and whatnot and just, you know, have fun with it. Make it your own. Do the rope. I actually originally when I was doing this, I was going to use that white nautical rope and then I got started on it and realized, oh, this isn't the rope I was going to originally use, but it's OK. It works out. So we'll just cut off, cut off the excess and I'm going to glue down 
kind of that last little edge. It's not cute. Don't worry about it. We're going to cover it up. <laughs> so I've got this little seahorse and this one is actually done in the wood tint from Folk Art and that is in just in the color gray. Now all of my products I'm using today are all plaid. Well, I, I lied. The Rust-Oleum one isn't, but the other ones are plaid. They actually sent me some stuff, so I'm super excited about that. And of course, who could have anything coastal, you know, without adding at least a little bit of stuff like shells. So I do add one shell. I don't want to do all shells, but I did want to, of course, add it. Just a little touch. So that's it, guys. Super easy. There you go. It comes off a lot bluer here than it really does in person. All right, so to tell you a little bit about our fun friends that I have today, this is Jamie from Simple Roots, Simple Living. And if you love farmhouse, you need to go check Jamie's channel out. She makes the most gorgeous farmhouse stuff. And she's just absolutely the sweetest and kindest person that you could ever hope to meet. Obviously, I don't haven't met her, met her, but you know what I mean, you know, virtually meet her. <laughs> You'll love her. Please go over and give her some love and you know, subscribe to her channel if you haven't. All right, so next we're gonna start off with one of these little pictures from Dollar Tree. I know, guessed it, big surprise, Dollar Tree. It was pink, uh, so I did a coat of the Nantucket Blue again, um, outside and inside. That way, when you look inside of it, you don't see, you know, a big pink inside of a picture. <laughs> and then I'm taking the mineral chalk paint to just kind of give it a little bit of a rustic edge to it. You know, I didn't want it to be completely perfect, but I didn't want to go, you know, full on distressing on this one either. So like I said, just kind of like a little bit of a brushing of it. I, I kind of went a little bit heavier on it, like around the rim and on the handle. I just felt like, well, that's where you'd get a lot more wear and tear on it. So that's just kind of what I went with. And next we're going to make a garland and these are just going to be two different sized beads. I don't honestly know the exact sizing of them. They're pretty close, but they're definitely not the same. We'll do one of them in the mineral chalk paint and one of them in the chiffon cream. And we're just going to start to go back and forth between the two of them, lacing or not lacing, but you know, stringing them on our twine. And I felt like it just gave it a really pretty kind of look to it. So I'm going to give it a nice little knot there just to keep it from moving around too much. It's going to get something else there eventually as well. So, and we'll just, of course, cut off that little bit of the edge, pull it tight, make sure it's not going anywhere. So Next, I noticed in one of my videos, I say so a lot and I'm so sorry. So um, we're going to keep going. I have this dollar, little sand dollar actually from, not the Dollar Tree. This is from Joann's. They just came out with like all of this really cool coastal type of stuff. Uh, so check it out. It, I just saw a few things they had already started putting out, but I do one coat of the chiffon cream and then I'm going to give just a little dusting of the mineral. And I'll tell you what, um, it looks pretty close, like to, you know, realistic. I didn't go too heavy on the mineral chalk paint, but it, the actual coloring of it in person, it looks pretty close. And We'll just basically, I did both sides obviously because you know, you're going to be moving the garland around and everything. And next what we will do is we're just going to start stringing our garland in it. I'm going to make a tassel first. So just, you know, a few times around, I, I do my tassels kind of weird. Um, I'll go ahead and show you just in case I wrap, you know, one side around it right there, which, um, I probably shouldn't have necessarily done, but that's how I did it. <laughs> and then we're going to start using glue. I know I'm sure a lot of people are probably like, why in the world would you use glue? But I like to do that as opposed to trying to tie it because I always seem to get it wrong. Oh, see, I lied. I thought I had cut this part, the first part out. So tie your garland to your tassel first. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then we're going to, you know, loop it around and actually make the top part of our tassel. Same way I did before. And again, I do like to use glue when I'm doing it because I will end up somehow or another pulling it the wrong direction and it'll fall apart. Who knows? So, and now I'm really conscious of it every single time I say it. <laughs> We're going to just uh, do the same thing, tie it around, and I'm going to secure it with hot glue as opposed to tying it tight. I don't know why I prefer that, but that's just my, my way of doing it, I suppose. And yep, here comes the hot glue. Maybe. 
Yes, there we go. <laughs> and just a little bit of, you know, just a tiny little dab will do just perfectly. And then I'll just smooth it all out and get it, you know, just the way I like it. Like I said, it just happens to be the way I like to do my, my gluing, my tassel making. And of course I had actually started off, had already tied it to it and realized it needed to be shorter. So I just cut it and, you know, retied it. And I'm just using the little part of the sand dollar that is a little slot. So I didn't have to worry about making another hole or anything like that. Tie it a good, you know, good strong knot so it doesn't go everywhere because that would make a mess. That would be my luck. I'd end up with it everywhere. <laughs> and now we're just going to, of course, cut off any excess twine that we have for our tassel and we're going to eventually split. Oh, see, I had a little dot that I needed to secure down, just a little part. I didn't want it coming apart. Um, that would be my luck. If I didn't glue things down, they'd probably come apart and they, those beads would just be everywhere. And Or my kids would get it and it would, like I said, just be everywhere. So I'll just cut that open to give us our tassel-y part of our tassel. And here's the whole project all together. It's super cute. I love this one. So let me now tell you about Liz. Liz, the official craft nerd, also does amazing videos. She goes in a more vintage direction now. Um, I think she kind of mentioned to me like she's found her thing that she really, really loves to do. So if you like that vintage shabby chic, she does a little bit of glitz in there, a little bit of rustic, well, mostly, you know, very rustic on the vintage side, you're going to absolutely love her as well. Also, sweetest, kindest people that, I mean, I don't know how it is. I've met so many amazing people here uh, while doing YouTube. Go check her out though. <laughs> and now we're going to do a, another Dollar Tree item. I'm just going to tape around the edges because this is actually kind of like a tile. So we're just going to paint that tile. Same thing, the Nantucket blue. And now I'll take off all of that tape. I'm not really sure why. I thought you needed to see every bit of it, but that's what we're doing today, I suppose. <laughs> and a little bit of the paint did get underneath my, my painter's tape, but that's all right. You just kind of rub it away a little bit. See, that's what we're doing right now is we're just gonna clean it up. I just basically put a slightly damp paper towel use my nail and really get around there and clean it up. So because I am going to distress the wood, quote unquote, wood part of this with the mineral chalk paint, but I didn't really want the blue, you know, all over it as well. So just a slight little bit of dusting of it on the front. And like, don't worry too much if you get a little too big of globs. I mean, you were about to put something on it anyways. So but I wanted to tone down the blue a little bit and of course kind of keeping with that same color scheme that we've had this whole time. And now I'll do it on the wood part too where I, I really liked the light wood of it but at the same time I really wanted to almost give it like a driftwood look to it and I really wish I had some driftwood. Um, for those of you who don't know or maybe are new, I live in Florida and I live, no lie, like an hour and 15 minutes away from the beach and I have hardly any shells. I don't have any driftwood. I mean, I really need to get myself in gear and get out to the beach. <laughs> um, so we are going to just kind of finish that up with any last little bit of the paint that I need on there. And next we're going to just put down our decal. I won't have you sit through the whole process because I measured and I tried to place it in certain spots, didn't like those. So we'll just skip past that. And we're going to get another one of those little seahorses. This one I'm gonna just paint in the mineral chalk paint. And now I'm going to give it just a little bit of a, um, not even a distressing really, just kind of going around the edge with that blue. I wanted to give my little seahorse just a little bit more detail around the edges. So I thought that that would be kind of cute and just a little something different. You know, the first one was all of that gray tone, you know, all of that gray, tint to the wood so just something different and it's just going to adorn our cute little saying live more worry less I think it's just a nice thought just to have you know again this is going on in my patio it's going to be just a calming relaxing place to be <laughs> here it is all finished just a cute little thing just to have sitting somewhere now the next one I left this one for last because it's not really a DIY in that sense. It is actually just kind of a flip. I've had this chest for years. 
I think I've had it since before my husband and I have been together. We just celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary. So this poor thing has been lugged around for a while and I'm just going to do kind of like a basic sanding, not anything where I'm trying to get all of the paint off. I'm just mostly trying to give it a smoother overall effect. Once I've done that, I'm just going to get, you know, a rag, get a damp, maybe a little bit of soap if you think it really needs it. This one did. And I'm going to get into all of the crevices. And I changed my clothes because I was out there in a dress and I'm like, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> and that same chiffon cream paint, I'm going to go and do a total of three coats. I probably could have gotten away with two. I decided I wanted to do three. I'm glad I did three, but and the roller, I liked it for the speed of it, but the actual overall like opaque coats, I definitely got more from a brush. So I'm going to do kind of the roller all around. And now I'm going to just use a small paintbrush just to get into the corners everywhere. I just kind of felt like that was going to be my best bet. And I used a bigger paintbrush all around the bottom detailing of that chest. So what we're basically doing with this is we're changing this chest almost into like a deck box. So here it is, uh, two coats at this point. So like I said, I probably could have gotten away with stopping at this point, uh, but I do end up doing one more coat just to give it, you know, a good effect. And that right there is actually how I store all of my stuff in between coats, just putting them in a plastic bag. And that's the after effect of the third coat. So you can stop here if you're happy with that, but of course I'm not. I'm going to go in with the Nantucket blue and I'm just going to go all around all of that detailing. And if I had different plans, to be honest, at first I was like, oh, well, I'll do the inside knots a little different. Maybe I'll do that in the mineral. And then I was like, what am I thinking? This is going to take me forever. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be like years <laughs> to get this all finished. So finally I was like, I'll just fill in the blue all throughout this whole thing. And then I got smart after about 10 minutes of doing this and I'm going to just tape it off. I do um, kind of rub the painter's tape on my pants just to kind of get a little bit of the stickiness off. I, you know, I don't want all of the paint coming off with the tape when I take it off. So I'll tape it all up and now I can just really go in there and get some coverage a whole lot faster. It still took some time, don't get me wrong. Originally, I wasn't going to do all of the uh, the detail in the blue. I was going to leave it with the white. Then I was like, you know what? I think it's going to look better this way. Here's kind of a close-up of it. And now we're going in with the mineral chalk paint just to give it a little bit more of an emphasis on those, you know, those indented areas and everything. And I'm sorry, the camera is going to move around a couple times. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just taking a chip brush, just really kind of working in there, not a whole lot of neatness going around and just really trying to give a lot more, you know, detailed look to these. And I do the same on the top as well, but I went a little too heavy on it. So I'm just going to take a smaller chip brush with that chiffon cream paint just to kind of lighten it up a little bit. Like I said, I went a little too heavy on it. I didn't like how, how, um, you know, abrupt it was. So I'll just do that all the way around fixing any little spots. I mean, it's really just kind of what, however you end up painting it. This was a wooden box and it's going to be turned into a deck box, which I absolutely love. And I didn't have to pay anything for it really. Cause I already had this and I already had all of the paint. So it was a win-win. <laughs> and here's the final look for it. I'm really happy with it. Absolutely love it. I loved all of my creations today and I really hope that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my dear friends, Jamie and Liz. And just so you know, coming up on Thursday, as you're watching this when it comes out on Wednesday, uh, I do have a crafty talk with Teresa at eight o'clock right here on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll come by and say hello. And if not, or if you do, I'll see you then. And if not, I'll see you guys next time.